April Fools was yesterday. This is not April Fools. This is 100% true. I wrote this down because as we were coming back from Boone after all these events had transpired, I thought to myself, this is the most amazing thing that I've ever witnessed. Definitely the funniest thing that I've ever witnessed. And if I do not write this down right now, I'm not gonna remember it. And it's called The Tragedy, as experienced by Link Neal and told by Rhett McLaughlin. As you see, there is a picture of a snowboard, snowboarder on there. Well, that's actually me. That's a picture of me. It was written in 1999, 10 years ago. It's, it's been, very- It's been a decade. It's very stained. The background. The events that unfolded the week of January the 8th in the year of our Lord, 1999, were to say, were, to say the least, eventful. As last minute plans for a quick hit of a snowboarding trip were being laid, not a soul knew what was to come. We, that's Link Neal, Greg Hartsfield, and I, mounted the dynasty and proceeded to Hawk's Nest, a bountiful resort in the heart of Appalachia. There we anticipated a rendezvous with Will Thomas and Ben Thomas of Bowie's Creek, Dan Sleshing, also from the creek, and Andy. I don't know Andy's last name or where he's from. We arrived at the scene around 5.30 in the p.m., and after Link, Greg and I assembled our boards and met up with the other half of our party. We hit the slopes. As I rode up the lift with Link, he expressed his passion for the sport, his utter amazement at the conditions, and his eagerness to return to the snowy playing field he loved to call home. We made about three or four runs each time venturing through the park, which consisted of two jumps, a tabletop followed by a sharper jump. Link, Will, and some of the other more experienced boarders were frolicking on and around these jumps, while I avoided them most of the time due to my lack of experience and sixth sense of clear and present danger. Apparently, Link, Link didn't possess this keen sense of the precarious, because after hitting the two jumps successfully on one of his runs, his confidence levels mushroomed. On our fifth and final run, Will and I cleared the tabletop jump and stopped short of the second one and waited for Link to come. Well, Link came all right, and he came with style. He, like a pro, bounced off the tabletop jump in full composure and landed it. It was at this point when Link neither stopped nor slowed down that I thought, man, Link's going for it. Yeah. Link had told Greg earlier in the evening that he should go balls to the wall. He was a man true to his word. Charles, Link is also known as Charles, or is known as Charles in former, formal, formal circles, and I want to call him Charles for the rest of this. It actually says Link is known as Charles in formal circles. Yeah, yeah. Carved back and forth skillfully as he progressed to the steep jump. It was then that Will yelled out, Link, you're going to bust! Bust, it turned out, would be too gentle of a word. Link nailed the face of the beastly incline, was hurled 8 to 10 feet in the air, obviously lost control while in the air, and disappeared over the horizon. I don't recall what I thought at that point, but I remember Will following Link over the jump much slower and me doing the same. That's when I saw Link laid out about 40 feet from the jump being consoled by Will. Will asked Link, are you hurt? Link responded, my hip is hurt. Will suggested, take, take your board off and walk it off. I believe that no matter how badly one male is injured, if the first person on the scene is another male, the instructions for therapy will be walk it off. <laughs> that's, that's insightful. <laughs> yeah. Walk it off. There would be no walking this off. Link, coherent at this point, moved up and out of the way of the base of the jump, and I closed it off with a sign that said caution. <laughs> I did. You like kept one in your pocket or no, something? No, there was like something on the side, and I did that. Caution. I returned down to the location of Link's landing to find him at a loss for words. <clears throat> he wouldn't respond to many questions. He was apparently gathering himself. Then it happened. The process that continued for many hours to come and may be the funniest thing that I've ever witnessed. <laughs> Link said to me, I think I'm going to faint. He placed his head between his legs, then raised it, and I noticed a completely blank look on his face. He said, hold on, I'm just coming too. I was confused, for it appeared as if Link had been to for about five minutes. He followed this phrase with, hold on, I'm just coming to. I looked at Will. We both laughed. He was joking, right? <coughs> then he says, hold on, I'm just coming to. Evidently, I've hurt my left hip. After a few seconds in which Will and I questioned Link repeatedly to no avail, he said, hold on, I'm just coming to. Evidently, I've hurt my left hip. <laughs> 
This broken record conversation continued for about 20 minutes. I asked Link who he was, he said, Link. I asked him who I was, he said, Rhett. He then became angry at our remedial interrogation. He was fully aware of his surroundings, but fully aware over and over again. He was continually forgetting anything and everything he or anyone else said. He was coming to repeatedly, and I was getting the big, biggest kick out of it. At this point, a snowboarding instructor arrived, and to shorten this soon-to-be-way-too-long story, soon to be way too long story up. He carried on the same conversation with poor Link. I kept telling myself he was only joking, but I figured that he wouldn't trouble others like this instructor with a practical joke. <laughs> Ski Patrol came on the scene and gave Link some oxygen and put him on a stretcher sled. Yeah. As Link was being strapped into the stretcher, he said, you guys are fulfilling a dream of mine. I've always wanted to ride in one of these. He turned to me and said, I don't know what's going on, but I assume it's funny, so don't forget any of it. <laughs> Really? I said that? As he slid down the hill, he threw his fist in the air in celebration and exclaimed, I feel so stupid! <laughs> there is no telling how many times Link woke up only to realize he was strapped in a sled going down a hill wearing an oxygen mask. But one thing is for sure, every time he woke up, he celebrated. <laughs> Some of the more amusing comments of the evening were heard as Link lay outstretched on a bed in the lodge. We all entered the room to find Link talking with some ski patrol guys. He saw us and said, Hold on, I'm just coming too. Evidently, I've hurt my left hip. <coughs> he had no idea he had filled us in on this condition some 80 times on the hill. A girl who worked at the lodge asked him what year it was. He said, 1998. It accomplished nothing to tell him that it was 1999 because he was bound to wake up in 1998 right after you told him. He thought he was at Snowshoe, a resort we had visited a couple of weeks before in West Virginia. He, it seemed as though he had lost about a month. <laughs> At one point, I was talking with the girl about Link's uh, condition. He would be quiet for a minute, pick his head up and say, Hey, do you want me to talk? Should I shut up? This happened several times in several minutes. In Link's mind, he had just awakened to two people talking about him, and he wanted them to know that he was now conscious. <laughs> the problem was that he was always conscious. I'll admit that I didn't cease laughing at him during the whole episode, even when it was explained to us that they were going to have to call an ambulance. They told us that Link wasn't at the normal level of consciousness. You didn't have to be a neurosurgeon to gather that. There was one problem, however. We had planned on staying at Mark Valentine's place in Boone that night, and Link had the directions. <laughs> Not good. This was in 99. There was no map quest and that kind of thing. That was a little aside that I just... Yeah. Will and I went into the room and asked Link if he had directions to Mark's house. This was way over Link's head. So I said, Link, Mark Valentine got married and he's living in Boone. You have the directions to his house. Check your pockets. Link looked at me as though I had said, Link, I'm Clint Eastwood. <laughs> so they called an ambulance and we followed it to Watauga Medical Center. Hmm. As we arrived at the hospital, we were directed to the ER. We were told there that we would have to wait to see Link. I stepped out for a minute to get something to drink, and that's when the doctor came in and said we could see him one at a time. So I missed the golden opportunity to see my lifelong friend first, but Will Thomas was a fine representative. Will has clued me in on his conversation with Link, and I will retell it as close to the facts as possible. Hmm, that's good. Apparently, Link discovered that the nurses had removed his clothes, all but his whitey tidies, and placed him in a very drafty gown. He did not discover this only once, however. As Will stood over the invalid, Sir Charles, that's Link, would realize he was in his undies and say, Will, look what you made them do. Will got her to take off my pants. Will, I can't believe you. <laughs> Will has told me that Link discovered this fact and made the same accusation over and over again. He topped that, however, with a comment to the nurse. One time, Will claims, as she came over, Link said to her, You took my pants off, didn't you? I'm surprised you didn't take my underwear off. I know you wanted to. <laughs> I said that to the nurse. Yeah. <sighs> now, coming to Link's defense, I can say that he shouldn't be held accountable for this. He was delirious, after all. 100% true. I felt Will had spent well enough time with Link, and I went back to see him. It was during this visit that Link saw that the nurses had put an IV in his arm. Link didn't like that too much, and he realized just how much he didn't like that about five times. He would look down and say, oh man, they put an IV in my arm. 
The conversation would progress a little and he'd say, oh man, they put an IV in my arm. I had a little fun at his expense. Before they wheeled him off for a CAT scan, I said, hey Link, did they put an IV in your arm? He said, I hope not. <laughs> he then looked down and said, oh man, they put an IV in my arm. <laughs> he would ask me, why aren't you hurt? <laughs> I told him that he wrecked snowboarding and that he was the only one in the accident. He would wait a little bit and say, why aren't you hurt? I told him once that he had been in, I told him, once I told him that he'd been in a car accident and that he was the only one hurt. It didn't matter because he forgot in about 15 seconds and said, why aren't you hurt? During the CAT scan, Greg and I left to get Mark. We later found the directions from his house in Boone. He returned to the hospital with us. They told us that Link had broken his pelvis. And then Mark went to see Link. He was holding a wet rag on his head and moaning and groaning about a severe headache in his broken pelvis. Well, I, because I'd, I'd also obviously hit my head. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> as well as broken my pelvis. Uh, he would look up and ask, what happened? Evidently, I fell on my head. It hurts like the devil. <laughs> and my hip is hurt. What happened? Evidently, I fell on my head. It hurts like the devil. And my hip is hurt. <laughs> During Mark's visit with Link, he asked Mark, didn't you get married? Mark had gotten married about a month before, and Link was at the wedding. Link said, why wasn't I there? Mark also asked about Christmas conference, where Mark had seen Link many times. Mark told Link he was at Christmas conference and that he saw him there. Link said, well, I didn't see you. <laughs> Later... Whoa. Later, Greg, Mark, Will, and I all went back to see Link. He was laying in the same bed, except this time he had in his hand a big yellow sign that read the following. Charles Neal, January 8th, 1999. Charles Neal, you fell snowboarding. You are at Wataga Medical Center. You have a concussion and a broken pelvis. The words were underlined. The words fell and the words concussion and the words pelvis were all underlined. As you can see, the key words that the doctor wanted to emphasize were fell, concussion, and pelvis. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. However, Link didn't take this note too seriously. When I arrived in the ER for the second time, Link held up a sign and said, Hey, Rhett, I got a broken penis. <laughs> <laughs> it's only one letter difference. He told Will and Mark about his apparently malfunctioning <laughs> penis a number of times. Or two. LV. Looks like an end. He was really amusing himself, and every time he would laugh, he would follow it with a moan because of his broken pelvis, not penis. <laughs> he read the sign a couple of times, and then he got that, I've just come into reality look on his face. I asked, how many times have you read that, Link? He said, once. The nurse finally told us that they were going to keep him overnight, and that was definitely all right with us. Having the same conversations with Link was getting frustrating. The nurse told us that he wouldn't remember anything from that night. We said that we'd call in the morning and see how he was. I called Link at 8.30, and he knew it was me. I asked him where he, where he was, and he said, Boone, I think. <laughs> I asked him what he was doing, and he said, Well, there's a woman taking blood from my arm, and I don't want to talk to anybody while she's doing it. <laughs> I still wasn't too straight, but I was kind of rude. Uh, our conversation ended shortly after that. We returned to the hospital to find Link considerably more coherent. He was still forgetting things, but the whole waking up repeatedly episode was over. After a day of relaxation and pain relief, Link was released like a restless coyote into the wild. His mind came back, and he, once, and he began to laugh with us about all that had happened. We took him home in the dynasty just as we had taken him there. To this day, Link doesn't remember snowboarding that night at all. He probably never will. The important thing is that a few lucky individuals will never forget it. And I'm one of them.